Bergamo has launched, and I honestly thought I was doing something wrong, so I didn't really want to talk about this in the review, and this is also kind of server adjacent, it has more to do with desktop, really, than server, but Bergamo has breathtaking power efficiency, and this may telegraph, may be a portent of things to come. Let me walk you through my thought process. Uh, people inside Intel may be freaking out if they put it together the way that I did. So I've got a little bit of an unusual setup here. This is a 128 core CPU. This is really a CPU that's only meant for cloud providers, but I've got it set up in our little test system, my kilowatt meters back here, and I mean, just idling here at a Fedora desktop with a fairly high-end uh, SSD that's chewing a lot of power. We're idling at 110 watts, 108 watts, something like that. We're only running four DIMMs, and I tried to configure this thing for just PCIe 3 storage. I tried to do a couple of things to save power. I know that the remote management is using some power. I, there's, there's a lot of stuff I'm glossing over here, a lot of work that I've done to try to get an apples to apples comparison. What I'm interested in is how much power is the IO die consuming, because this should be the same IO die between our 96 core, uh, you know, Genoa part, as opposed to our 128 core Bergamo part. And roughly everything is the same except the chiplets. What I'm curious about is how much power does the chiplet use? And the number will shock you. It's on the order of 2 watts, 2.3 watts to 1.5, 1.7 watts, depending on how I measure. AMD actually does provide a lot of telemetry in their CPU for doing these kinds of measurements. In addition to, you know, the rough hewn, you know, like P0, P1, you know, what sort of power states the Infinity Fabric is running in. You can also get, you know, individual core level power states, and there's also two registers, a 32-bit register, I think, and a 64-bit register from digging around in here that will give us some metrics on power utilization. And the reason that this is so important for desktop is that there is a path here that AMD could take with their desktop CPUs that I think might cause some uh, heartburn inside of Intel. If we switch gears a little bit and we talk about or a Ryzen 9 7950X desktop processor. Well, the I.O. die on this is a lot smaller, isn't it? It's a different lithography process. It physically looks different. You can see that. And our chiplets, well, those look familiar. Huh, would you look at that? Not quite the same, but they do look similar, don't they? We know that when one of these chips is put together, that it's sure, well, we're 87% sure that AMD will bend the chiplets that physically exist on this CPU. So one of them will clock a little bit higher, maybe uses a little bit less power, and the other one will clock a little bit lower and use a little bit less power. So when this system is fully loaded, uh, you know, you're not going to be seeing the really high core clocks because there's just not enough power budget available. That's what we're talking about too when we're talking about server CPU power budget. If you're running a fully loaded system with PCIe 5 devices, more of your power budget is going to go to that I.O. die than your their compute die. Uh, remember when Milan launched, the AMD launch platform for Milan was uh, using a disproportionate amount of its power budget for I.O., even when that I.O. was idle, and Gigabyte was the first vendor to sort of crack that nut and figure out, okay, Infinity Fabric power management states and everything else, it's going to run like grease lightning if we do this, and so a Gigabyte motherboards were able to outperform even AMD's own reference motherboards pretty quick out the gate with the launch of, of Milan. We didn't really have any repeats of that with, with Genoa, I'm just using that as an illustration to say that the power budget of the whole thing can affect the performance of an indiv individual CPU core. Likewise, you know, these chiplets use a heck of a lot more power than their server counterparts because AMD is chasing, you know, the five, six gigahertz dragon on, on this platform versus the server platform. On server, you want stability. And yet, for an efficiency core, in terms of things that are efficient in the data center, Bergamo is head and shoulders ahead of anything else, even ARM. It sure seems like, I mean, I don't have any ARM systems to test, so I'm not 100% not sure of that, but for the numbers that have been published and my own numbers on Bergamo, it sure looks like AMD is ahead of the curve there. So what's to stop them from taking their 16-core chiplet and slamming that on a desktop CPU and then having that much more power budget available for your 8-core performance chiplet? So you could have an efficiency chiplet and a performance chiplet. And it's, I know what you're thinking, it's like, oh, that's what Intel did. It's like, no, you don't realize the madness, which is the whole reason I made this video. The Zen 4C cores on Bergamo are exactly the same, except for the L3 cache, as 
the Zen 4 not see counterparts. So in terms of a Giza, in terms of platform bring up, in terms of everything else, there is nothing stopping AMD from having a mixed chiplet design that is truly mixed floor plan. You've got 3D vCache or not, and you've got you know eight or 16 cores here. Maybe the chiplets where one of the one side is damaged and you only get eight cores that are working, that gives you more physical silicon real estate for better power dissipation, for better heat dissipation, because you physically only lit up you know, one half or the other half of the 16 core chiplet because of, you know, defects or bending problems or whatever. But maybe for the very best ones, you could have 24 cores on desktop. But it's not a cut down efficiency core. It is the same Zen 4 core. So all of the software problems that Intel had with the Alder Lake bring up, none of that will be an issue for AMD because all of the cores are exactly the same. If this is their strategy going forward, if this is what... Uh, Mark Papermaster meant when he said they were opening up multiple swim lanes at their, uh, you know, at their AMD event to be able to run, you know, uh, parallel processes so that they have a, an efficiency core that is the same floor plan as the performance core. We already know that the cache size doesn't matter. We already, we, we've, we've already pretty much worked out the issues with variable sizes of L3 cache with the 3DV cache gaming parts. You know, you've got one chiplet that has 3db cache and one that doesn't and mostly that's not much of a problem okay it was a little bit of a problem depends on the game there's there, there's not there's an asterisk there but mostly it's not a problem and so they could literally do that with with the bergamo chiplets as well and be able to pack in 24 cores in this kind of a package i mean there's other things to work out logistically like you know memory bandwidth and io and everything like that but with 128 cores in this socket with 12 memory channels it doesn't seem like it's that much of an issue. So if AMD's plan for freeing up power budget on efficiency cores or in a fully loaded CPU scenario is to use Bergamo chiplets or to use an approach like Bergamo chiplets and have uh, another process, another swim lane specifically for those performance chiplets, then that could be how AMD frees up power budget and that could be how AMD approaches what Intel is doing with performance and efficiency cores. Because what Intel is doing with performance and efficiency cores is actually pretty clever. You've got performance cores, which can eat up all of your power budget, and efficiency cores, which really don't use very much power at all. And as we have seen, even in our own testing here at level one, if you turn off the efficiency cores, the performance cores just eat all of that power budget, or almost all of it. I mean, it's within eight or 10 watts. The efficiency cores are within spitting distance of the math here of these, you know, a couple of watts each. And right now they clock a little bit higher in Rocket Lake, but I have a feeling that if you're willing to put a little bit more power into your Zen 4C AMD efficiency cores, then you're probably gonna be able to break past the four gigahertz barrier with those cores. And if that's what AMD actually has planned, I don't know. No one has said anything, that's just one path forward for AMD. They could use the cores that are, exist in Bergamo as efficient cores that are low power to free up more power budget for everything else. Because you cannot change the laws of physics! And you, you need all the power. And conversely, if Intel continues on the path that they're on, Intel is going to have to incorporate into their design probably even more performance performance cores like I wouldn't be surprised if there's performance max or perform performance ultra or something like that where you end up with like two cores that are just absolutely monstrous with a crazy amount of silicon real estate and then you know like eight cores that are middle of the road and then eight efficiency cores and that becomes the new you know i9 desktop cpu in a generation or two from now I mean that type of strategy could work for Intel if they go all in on that strategy. But if AMD embraces this strategy for dealing with performance chiplets and efficiency chiplets, they're basically there overnight. So what this means and what I th thought was wrong is that when we've got 128 cores and we're talking about just the CPUs that are running, when you use the register tests, I'm getting about 1.7 watts. When we use you know the whole rest of the system and the overhead, it's like 2.1, 2.2 watts. Uh, you know, Dr. Ian Cutrus, Tech Tech Potato, has also brought up the conversation of uh, picojoules per bit. What is the power cost in terms of moving things around if you want to get super technical? And we know that AMD's products on the GPU side are even leading the CPU in terms of picojoules per bit. 
which is why I mentioned that. But all of this to say that I've got the receipts in terms of power usage, but think about a 35 watt power budget and what that might enable us to do. And it might enable us to see 16 Zen 4 cores, full fat Zen 4 cores, AVX 512, no special anything. We're literally just shuffling data between a core that can't clock as high and has less cache and cores that can clock really high and have much more cache, or much, much more cache in the case of 3DV cache. So that's already a case of been there, done that for AMD. So if AMD wants to use this path to enable something like efficiency chiplets and uh, performance chiplets, they can, and they have an immediate, it seems like, path to a 24-core desktop platform, but it's 24 true full-fat cores. If you realize the implications of that, and that this is happening in a 35-watt budget, you realize what a tremendous position AMD has put itself in if it is able to staff and maintain the upkeep required to keep those swim lanes open. And so... I don't have any evidence of this and nothing else to suggest this. I even looked at high-res photography of the, uh, the IO die on both Genoa and, you know, AM5. And on Genoa, it looks like each chiplet, you know, the, the dual chiplet chiplets where there's two eight-core complexes, I would expect to have to use two connections to the main IO die. And the photography of the main IO die looks like we've only got a total of 12 of those when there should be 16 connections if we have eight dual chiplet chiplets. And so in the photography, it looks like we're missing some links. But it's probably just me. I may not understand, but that's something to look out for. Maybe there are an extra set of, of GMI links there because there was some early uh, diagrams AMD shared that had extra GMI links, but, but none of that matters. What matters is that Ber Bergamo is so power efficient if you're in a power constrained data center, it's, it's the choice. 3.1 gigahertz on pretty much all workloads at 320 watts, not really having much of anything else in the rest of the system, is seriously darned impressive. And I'm sure that's gonna translate somehow to desktop parts. If AMD wants to run dual lithographies at once, it's like we're gonna sell you only this tiny little piece of silicon that's on the very most expensive process. And then we'll sell you another piece of silicon that's on last year's process. And then we'll sell you another piece of silicon that's on the year before that's process that's doing IO and your interface and everything else. That seems like the best of all worlds in terms of cost optimization, but also in terms of what you're delivering to the end user, because you can give the end user the cuttingest, bleedingest edge technology along with the tried and true technology all in one package. It seems like it's a win. I don't know, but I may be getting ahead of myself. Time will tell. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I really might, wouldn't mind seeing Intel's, you know, performance core ultra cores, like an ultra peak core, a regular peak core, and an efficiency core, if they go that way. I mean, it just seems like the trajectory that they'd be headed on if they, they stay the course. So, I don't know. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums.